I feel like you literally stopped talking about what you were talking about just because I hit the record button. <laughs> what? Uh, you hit the record button now? I thought it was you hit it before. <laughs> yeah, I, know, I wasn't sure when you were going to do it. Yeah, uh, but... a friend of mine has been playing Send the Song as well, uh, and he has every character that's available. Uh, oh, especially I... just saving up material to hit the next one at crops. I do not have every single character. Um... But I mean, good for them. Um, it was uh, so I I came back to the game and they had like Ching Yi, freaking um, I would who I would describe as a police Hatsune Miku, but also like like robot with big twin tail hairstyle, <clears throat> and is also a cop. Um, and she's very fun to play as. Uh, when you do her attack, um. She starts to like shoot electricity everywhere, like with hyper fast movement. Um, builds up a meter that she can use for a strong series of attacks that build up a lot of days. So you can stun enemies uh, really well. And then uh, Jane Doe came out, <clears throat> and uh, I got multiple copies of Jane Doe because I was very very lucky. She is a very very fun character. She has multiple dodges. Um, like you know, you have a dodge and you have a cooldown. She has two dodges in a row. They can do, um, and like a a, mo a mode called her uh, passion mode, in which she becomes like extremely fast, leaving after images behind, and uh, just annihilates things. Okay. Um, because she's an anomaly character, and uh, basically what that means is whenever you deal an element type damage, you start to build up a meter of uh, like a status effect. Um, so for her, it's physical. So that physical meter builds up, and then. When that meter f is completely full, it's cashed out for a huge chunk of damage, like, you know, Dark Souls, or sorry, Elden Ring Bleed would be a good uh, approximation. Okay. So, doing huge chunks of bleed damage, like hundreds of thousands of damage. <clears throat> oh, um, Elden Ring Blade is then, like, it pops and it does a massive it amount pops. of damage, it's not a time yes. damage. Yeah, it pops and boom, you know, health bar just disintegrates. That's been really fun to play. Yeah, I mean... Like Zenless on Zero, um, story pacing is better for the new update and everything. They had a very, they had a fun little um, event uh, that was kind of uh, akin to like a, a light papers please type thing, where you play as somebody who has to check the check to see if you should uh, give somebody like their license they're applying for or anything, and it was just a little fun thing where you get to see the characters in a different context. <laughs> And, um, I mean, there's a new, uh, Punk Guy Star Rail update coming forward, too. What that's are they the, releasing? Uh, Fei Xiao, who is the, uh, white-haired, um, fox girl general, who's super fast, and has a really good English VA, who is, uh, not VAing right now, I think, because of the strike. Um, but the JP VA is good, too. Oh, I didn't, uh, I didn't realize there was a voice actor strike right now. Yeah, I'm not sure um, when it's come to an end or if it already has, but I know that there was a strike. Um, and then it's also like the new story content and everything that, because uh, the last update was kind of a part one cliffhanger sty style <clears throat> leaving off on thing. So getting the conclusion for that. The only real like non gotcha game that I have played uh, has been Tsukihime, the remake. I always wanted um, to try that series, yeah. but I never actually got to do it. It's fun. It's, um, if you like visual novels, yes. Because it's a similar thing, like, uh, if you've ever played Fate Stay Night, where you have multiple routes, then you have lots of the bad end routes. It's a visual novel. It's... Yeah. I know. There, there's some visual novels that are very different, but this is very much a very classic visual novel. And I enjoyed it. I got emotionally invested in the story all over again. There were a lot of parts that were new uh, from the original. So even if you've played the original, there's value in playing this. Um, like, they got rid of my boy Nervenskur. <laughs> <laughs> the most impronounceable name. There's no... Uh, there's no vowels in there. It's all consonants. Oh, okay. Hmm. So... Got rid of him, replaced him with a different character who was a little bit more thematically appropriate, and uh, <clears throat> kind of expanded on the uh, the two routes that are in it because there's mainly two routes 
in this one, which are the called the near side routes, which are Arqueed and Seal. Um, blue haired chick with glasses, and then uh, everybody's famous uh, favorite funny vamp with the blonde hair and the red eyes. I also forgot just how um, how much characterization there is for uh, Shiki Tono, your uh, perspective character. I do appreciate that. The, the world of bland protagonists sucks. Because, I mean, um, dude is uh, very, mis- very much trying to deal with the fact that I can see the lines which, if you cut, things just die. People, objects, everything is so fragile it can just die with a single slice. It's way too easy. What's the point of it all? You know, a little bit of misanthropy and uh, apathy towards life and then how that kind of interacts with the person who taught him good life lessons to, you know, cherish things. And it's, it, it, there's a really good story in there with that um, main character there. So, not really a bland self-insert protagonist, um, but it's a good story. Almost kind of a one punch man kind of situation, though. Kinda. Uh, I mean, he's also, like, uh, deeply, like, traumatized because of, like, the the, the very opening scene of the game is is him walking out into a field and just seeing uh tons of cut up bodies like it is it is brutal so lots of uh themes of of death and life and i like that sort of stuff um so yeah yeah no, that was good uh i've been really busy teaching uh fourth grade so i haven't really had a lot of free time you know understandable just because uh I'm, I'm over the getting super exhausted every single day thing. I'm getting used to my routine. Yeah. Uh, I'm also, like, flinching every time I hear a kid say, what the Sigma? Is that a thing? They actually yeah. Yes. Are... Yes. Hell. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, or somebody, uh, Skibbity and Sigma, I hear a lot. Also, also Riz. That's another one I hear. I don't know why you suddenly jumped to about like two hundred percent volume, but because uh... the kids news about the kids seems to be as abrasive as possible. I didn't even touch anything on my volume <laughs> settings. I don't know what happened. Yeah, it's weird. Anyway, sorry about that. <clears throat> it's alright. Um, yeah, <laughs> uh, they're having the first math test, proper proper math test for a unit that we've learned tomorrow. Yay! Well, I, I hope they do well. well. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I've, I've kind of gone to the swing of things. I had my first vo- uh, parent volunteer come in, and uh, she said, uh, you know, g- give me lots of compliments, say I was, did a good job, and that I had, like, and that I was organized, which was amazing to hear, because I've never been told I'm organized before. That is so, a new one. Yeah. But, you know I, know, I know, I know my students well, I know what they need, and I've been working to help them, so that's all been fine and dandy. I'm trying, there's... There's some stories I could probably share, but none are coming to mind in particular right now. Because, I mean, a, uh, there have been some hard times with some of my um, students that I've been able to help them through and support them through. I'm a very, I'm a very, I think I'm a very, like, easygoing teacher to a certain extent. Like, I'll let the kids express themselves. I'll let them sit around the room. You know, I, I'm not hyper strict. But uh, I do I do have standards for how we like interact with each other and you know that such and such blah blah blah. blah. Uh, one other thing that I, I probably want to mention is I watched a show in its entirety. Sure um, it? It's called The Good Place. Have you heard of it? Oh yeah. I watched all four seasons of The Good Place, and I had the weird realization that that show is basically my my religion. So that was interesting to watch. It was... I have not seen a show that breaks its own status quo over its knee so many times like that show. Oh, yeah. I appreciate like, that they, they don't stop. You know? It just gets yeah. more intense as the seasons go on. Like, they change more and more and more. Like, you think it's going to go one way, but um, take a step back. For those who don't know, The Good Place is a story. Individuals who have died have found them the good place. Congrats, you did it. You lived a good life. You are the good place. Why are you suddenly so quiet? 
I don't know. <laughs> I'm like right next to my mic. What is going on? Um, I can check and fix my cord later, but probably not right now. <clears throat> it's staying consistent on my end. I'm not sure about patient. So it's consistent for Slasher. It's just Casey's having weird internet stuff. I understand. Um, yeah, no. Uh, the main character uh, who we focus on is Eleanor, who um, realizes that there must have been a mistake because she does not belong in the good place. She very much did not live a perfect life or even a good life. <laughs> or a moral and... <laughs> one, if I remember right. <laughs> no, not, not moral at all. And so um, she has to find a way to not reveal to anybody um, that she is, well, not get revealed to the important people, but she shouldn't be there because she doesn't want to get sent to hell to go get tortured forever. And that's kind of the main thrust of the show. And it goes so far from that, like really far, an, an impressive amount. I Don't highly, highly recommend it. Do not pull any punches about judging people for the things that they've done. Yeah. If you have not seen The Good Places on Netflix, there's four seasons of it. Um, Is that the show? Because <clears throat> I feel like I keep getting this confused with Good Omens. Um, is that the show that has an episode on a dude that's indecisive, I think was the thing? Yes. And they have it uh, she... with a thing with the trolley problem? <clears throat> yes. Okay, so that's that show. I need to remember that. There is... Um... <clears throat> You can tell they did the research because one of the main characters is Chidi, who is a professor of um, ethics and who has all of the different schools and philosophies of morality and ethics like down pat and will bring them up as like discussion points as they're relevant to the situation. And it's just it's so expertly written. Like the people who wrote this show knew what they were doing. They knew what they were talking about. They did as they kind of explore these topics. Um <clears throat> The summary that I described for the main thrust of the show is the main thrust of season one of the show, to be specific. The seasons could not be more. <clears throat> In a good way. I it's haven't a nice seen... progression. I yeah. feel invested. I haven't seen very much of the show at all, but I know the big twist at the end of season one and the way that things start changing. In season two. So. <laughs> Even if you know that, season three and four might surprise you. Hmm. I'm just not particularly interested in some of the baser concepts. Just, you know, my personal viewpoint. As somebody who is uh, a Christian, right? Obviously, I have my own idea of what the afterlife is going to be like, right? I mean, the, the one thing that I really take offense to is just the insinuation that intention is meaningless. I know uh, that it's just fantasy, but... Intention matters as much as the results do. See, that's the thing. The show deals with that. The show this explicitly talks about um, intention and consequence are both important. Mm. Like that's that's very much one of the talking points. Um, one person may have had good intentions, but the consequences were bad. One person may have had um, good consequences, but the intentions were bad. Like th those are just discussed. Those are characters that are talked about. I suppose I might have to look into it a bit more then. Mm -hmm. It is definitely so, to keep an open mind about. Yeah. Um, keep an open mind, and obviously, like, a lot of this, um, one person I was talking to, uh, their takeaway was, oh, this is a critique of the American justice system. And I was like, that's a perspective to have. It's not necessarily one that I share, but I, I guess I can see how you got that, right? Likewise, um, I could see where they would come from from that, but I didn't take that. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> There's, you know, that that room for interpretation, and uh, as long as you keep it in mind, I think you'll enjoy it. Uh, <laughs> because it had me like even reflecting a lot my own beliefs and my own view that they were talking about. And also very funny, consistently. Um, if you have not seen The Good Place, uh, go check it out. <clears throat> Definitely, uh, right. second diagram. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, aside from that, just in general, it is nice to get regular pages mm. that are uh, big enough to allow me to not feel bad about businesses. <laughs> yeah, just hobbies in general. Just like spending on yeah. fun things. Oh, I need food. Like, oh yeah, I get paid every two weeks. That's awesome. And it's, I can rely on, I can 
can plan around that. Yay. So I'm going to save it up my... Hopefully one day I can get just waiting for the... <laughs> Let everything... I hope that happens, and this is just getting more expensive. Where the bags buy them I all. can't. It will eventually. Okay, I'm, I'm going to ask, is everyone on their microphones? Have to. Um... um I was slightly to the side of it, but I'm yeah, that right was not helping. I'm pretty close to mine at the moment. Sometimes, uh, yeah, patient, you're good. Don't worry about it. Uh, mine's a headset, so <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Slice your um, gobble zero. I'm gonna need you to be on your microphone and not beside it because apparently it's pretty directional. It's you know. Okay, how's this? Is this better? It's it's better. It's a little loud. That's that's better than very very quiet. Bear with me. Okay. I, I'm going to um, adjust you upwards right. so that you would be audible. Check. Sounds as check, as check, as check. Check. Yep. <clears throat> oh, what the fuck? My webcam is a microphone? What? <sighs> <sighs> okay, I might be more clear now. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yes. Why did, why did it default to my webcam? What the fuck? <laughs> there we go. We're all clear now. Yeah. Okay. So, okay, I'm gonna run that bu- run that back a little bit. They uh, talked about yeah. Zenless Zone Zero. I don't care. Uh, they talked about uh, the Honkai Star Rail, and I or even less. <laughs> and then uh, discussion of the Good Place, which sounds very intriguing. Quite honestly, I'm gonna I'm gonna in the editing remind me. I'm gonna see if I can normalize the audio so it is actually as audible as possible. Because that got ah, kind of yeah okay yeah. yeah I flipped a few switches that might help okay yeah so <laughs> oh okay. that is, that is largely my fault for not like calling a halt and actually fixing the sound earlier that's my bad I said something now it's it wouldn't uh, definitely wouldn't hurt on our end to go through our video and mic settings to make sure everything is properly set that that was weird okay uh so. Who wants to? Someone's echoing. Uh, um, I'm getting a very quiet, very delayed echo myself, but it's it's not that bad. Well, patient's muted, so I'm assuming it's zero. <laughs> yeah. Well. Uh, yeah. Anyway, so um, <clears throat> what are we um, talking about? We were talking about the good place, and then zero gets money, which is nice. Consistent employment. Yeah. Yay. Consistent employment. Um. I mean, the only other thing I could really potentially, like, talk about is, uh, I, I mean, Final Fantasy XIV is the other game that I play semi-regularly. That's fine. <laughs> I don't know. Raiding, yay. Woo. Honey Bee Lovely likes to destroy you really badly. They have an entire raid boss whose whole mechanic is, I'm going to make you simp for me. I'm not joking. You have a heart meter above your head, and as you get hit by, by various mechanics that you fail, the heart meter fills up. When it fills up, you are, you are attracted to her, and you just heal her. And oh. she gets buffed. Hmm. Well, all right. That's fun. So it's uh, this is a, it's an arena fight against an idol that you cannot allow to... Uh, no, no super chats for this idol, basically. <laughs> Don't make her too powerful. No Akasupas. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> that's that's pretty wacky. I I like I appreciate that. <laughs> they, it's a fun fight, um, with a very annoying song. It's a good song. It gets a very very annoying as you oh. listen to it over and over again because it's her singing about how she's gonna beat you. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Uh, how long is the song? Uh, like two, three minutes, and the fight's like nine-ish minutes long. Oh, that's not the worst, but that's not great. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It's, it's raid content, which means, hey, guess what? You're going to do it over and over again. Oh, yeah, that doesn't You're going to spend at least two hours trying this fight in one set. In one set. <clears throat> so, yeah, that's how it is. I will say the raids are much better than they were in the last expansion. That's good. Um, the last, last expansion had raid mechanics where it was like, if you take more than two steps during this particular thing, um, you wipe the party, right? Like it was oh. 
really, really like nonsense, obscure, go here, go there. Now you have to swap here with this person here and it's not consistent because it's random. And if you, one of the eight people playing makes a mistake, the party wipes and you have to start over. That was uh, what rating in the last expansion was kind of like. So comparatively, uh, they don't do that. <laughs> there's no, there's not a huge amount of body checks in the fight. Body yeah. checks being like, if you don't have this many people, you just lose essentially. Yeah, ah. basically. Is everybody up? Yeah. Okay. Cool. You live. Is everybody up? Nah. Okay. Let's start over. <laughs> mm. You can see how rating can become very toxic with <clears throat> certain people. Yeah. Are they listening to feedback, or are they just getting better at designing encounters? Um, they are listening to feedback, obviously, and uh, some of the encounters before, like the expansion, last expansion, were like really, really good. Um. But you have the issue of they're ch constantly changing and updating the game and changing how jobs work. And Some jobs being like homogenized. And, worth yeah. remembering that anyone that has gotten to the raids at what is currently end game has played a lot of the game by now. Mm. So, how challenging do you make it? Do you make it? decently challenging and your top level players complain that it's boring and too easy or do you make it really challenging and then all of your average players are like oh this is not a fan of how difficult this is i'm probably not going to be able to complete it <clears throat> uh, there's also a disparity in uh differences in skill level and such between the western audience and the japanese audience that doesn't have to worry about internet issues mm. um in Japan, on the Japan <clears throat> servers, um, people will do... Um, you can just queue up for one of the hardest fights in the game in the normal duty finder. Whereas everywhere else you have to go and explicitly go into party finder, which means making a party of people who are there specifically to do just that one fight. Right? And you have to communicate and plan and everything, whereas the Japanese audience can just jump in and just do it. So... Uh, yeah, because of that, um, the, the cultures are very different. Hmm. So you have to deal with that and balance around that. But there are also just like more interesting mechanics in previous expansions because, uh, for example, in Endwalker, um, there are lots of mechanics that just ignore a tank's invul invulnerability. Like tanks have a skill that they can use, like it's, a, it's like a six or seven minute cooldown where they can invuln and briefly become invulnerable, unable to be killed, right? Um, in previous fights, you can use that as like your recovery tool, like something happened and we need to like tank and take that invuln and we can still clear the fight, right? Whereas they added a lot of mechanics last expansion that um, don't care if your tank has invuln. It'll kill your tank anyways. I don't really like that. I don't like invalidating an entire tool set a class has yeah and it was lots of stuff like that where um <clears throat> it was just very brutal very punishing um with not a lot of chances for recovery um but here they struck a really nice balance of making fights that are challenging but you know aren't punishing that's kind of like the what you're trying to go for you know mm-hmm mm -hmm. it's a difference between like your group takes like a couple weeks to get this fight cleared Versus, it has been six months, and we have been on the same fight. That's that's rough. And that was P10S for me and my group, which is an incredibly obtuse, poorly designed fight. Mm. Well, but, um, better yeah, now. rating is fun now. Yeah, it's better now. It's fun now. So, yeah. that's it for me, really. Can't think of anything else to talk about right now. I mean, just to continue on from that... Um... I have also been playing 14, and uh, nothing special to really talk about. I've been playing Dragoon because I'm about to get into Heaven's Ward, and I would like Astinian to make sense as a character. <laughs> so I am doing the Dragoon questline because that's his thing, all of it. Uh, mm -hmm. So, you know, that's slow going. It's cool. Enjoying it, or has it been kind of a slog? Uh, I mean, it's leveling a second class, so it's going to be a slog. That's just how that goes. Mm. Uh, yeah, that's fair. Yeah. Though I will say, the 
class itself is way less fun than, uh, man, that echo on U0 is really, <laughs> wow. <laughs> um, yeah, the class is boring. Uh, um, mm, that's right. as, as far as I've gotten, it is very, very boring. Hey, Zero, when you're not actively talking, you may want to mute yourself. Or that. You with us, Zero? Welcome back. Muted, so can't really test it right now. But, uh, um, yeah, so the class itself is just very boring. You do your one, two, three. No, you do uh, one, two, which is a debuff. And then you do one, two, three about a hundred times. And that's how oh. the fight goes. <laughs> Every Ooh. fight. Yeah. Ah, uh, Dragoon. It, it, it does not have the interesting mechanic of Ninja that has its own special cooldown thing of... Here's a bunch of things you can do depending on the circumstances, which makes the class feel very dynamic, and I appreciate. Um, Is yeah, the dragoon I, at least like stable and unkillable? Like it's really reliable. Uh, the dragoon's thing is movement, kind of. Uh, so, like I said, you get your one, two, three. You get your jump towards an enemy and then instantly jump back, which is basically just hey, you have a ranged attack. That's what that means. That doesn't actually do anything. It's it's just you hit them from a distance, effectively. Mm. Um, it's cool flavor text, but come on. Um, and I had, and you uh, have I other jumps, say, so you can jump directly towards an enemy, so you're right next to them, or you can jump fifteen feet. It's not feet. It's fucking whatever measurement they use. Yams, Yams. I think it is. Yeah, you <laughs> yeah. jump fifteen of those away. That I'm gonna guess is fucking feet. But <laughs> um, yeah, and that's those are the cool tools you get as part of you know taking on this super special upgrade to your lancer class. Is you can jump towards the enemy and you can jump away from the enemy. It doesn't do any damage. You're just moving. Cool. Thanks. And what were you going to say, Zero? The issue I have with certain classes, especially with, like, uh, melee DPS, is certain classes are just not nearly as fun as, like, um, having the flexibility of my main, which is Ninja, right? Hmm. Um, particularly for, uh, like, I was trying Viper out. And Viper has the thing of, oh, hey, left, right, left, right, so on, so forth. It gets incredibly mind-numbing after a while with Viper, especially because they actually removed some of the complexity, which is like, yeah, now it's easy to play, super approachable to play. It's also boring. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I feel you were there with uh, Dragoon. And obviously it's like, because they've been rebalancing classes, there's some classes that have... They, they just play boring now because they've gotten all the stuff that was interesting at low levels taken away because they want the class to play simpler at higher levels. And that, I get it, but it sucks for new players. Makes the game feel oh, boring. Oh, yeah, things for new become players. backloaded. It's not great. You don't want the game to be boring for new players. That is a bad thing. Like, it should be. It is a bad thing, and the, and the developers know it very well, which is why they are so pushy with the whole sprouts thing and why the community has embraced that for the most part uh like if you are a new player you are a sprout you have an icon over your head that says hey i am a new player please don't be too mean to me um <laughs> like and that's really cool because the community generally of yeah okay we, we, we're gonna help you through this and like you know you have a fucking learner's permit you're working things out it's fine we're gonna get through this together. Yeah, basically. Uh, yeah, and that's what there's cool. a culture of good people were helped when they were sprouts, and they want to pay it forward. Mm. That's good. I like that. Yeah, but uh, making the classes really, really easy to play at low levels, whether intentional or not. I mean, presumably it's not intentional. That's not great because you know if if you're low level and your class has a one two three and you don't have to worry about positionals you don't have to worry about where you are relative to the enemy you don't have to worry about any of the more complex mechanics that each class has because all of them get fairly 
or they're supposed to all get fairly involved mechanics for how they work and uh, if some of those mechanics are dialed down so basically they aren't anything for the low level players then the low level players don't do anything like you go from the base class to the job class and it plays exactly the fucking same that's not great. I was going to say wouldn't wouldn't that just not teach you how to play the game like you, you once you hit the big leagues you just wouldn't know how to play essentially i don't um, know because not necessarily. They, they did the no. massive streamlining uh, for the new expansion so that hasn't really shaken out yet out, out of thought mm. of how that affects new players going into late game content a lot of the move towards streamlining is it's not a new thing it's actually been a thing since shadowbringer um and in particular uh because we hit level 100 and um some classes from 99 or sorry from 90 to 100 get like two buttons we get two new buttons we got rid of old buttons as well um for example uh did you know that Ninja used to have a skill called, I think it was like Shadow Fang or Night Fang, that was a dot that they could inflict? I did not know that. I thought the only dot was, I think it's Doton? Most classes used to have dot abilities. Mm. They got removed from the game almost entirely. Oh, so does Archer not have its then? Because I remember, I did play Archer for until I got to Archer's one of the like it. one of the few cases that still has one. Um, but, uh, there used to be a lot, lot more of that, um, that in general has been toned down greatly and when, you know, a lot of people will, they appreciate that. It doesn't um, feel good. I think that, that's, that's, that's what I would say about it is it doesn't feel good to do dots because it doesn't feel impactful. It doesn't feel like you're doing anything. Yes. Right. So we streamline it. We turn some abilities that otherwise would be other things into this is now a passive trait instead. So you don't have to worry about pushing a button for that. There we go. You have your hotbar space, level 100. And then you go down to like level 50. And I'm like, oh, my hotbar is empty. Mm. Oh, no. Because you have to sink down for certain um, oh, yeah. roulettes. Yeah. If, if you're doing a level 40 dungeon, then you can be at most level 43 or around there somewhere. Yeah. So when people. Talk about, you know, making sure the game plays fun at early levels. That's not just for new players. That's for regular players who are forced to go down in level. Yeah. Every now and then. But, like, that's also the thing of, like, for old players, it's like, oh, I've got to do this shit again. It's going to be, okay, this is going to be a hell of a 10 minutes, but all right, let's do it. But for new players, that is their constant. That is the thing they are living in all the time mm -hmm. and they haven't decided whether they like the game yet so yeah it's not great uh what level is your dragoon uh 45 i am about to get the one ability that is kind of powerful that actually does fucking damage but will it be fun probably be fun not to use Honestly, it... I am literally just trying uh... to get to the level 50 quest because that's as far as i'm aware when the job quests end i don't know I have every job at 50. Job quests do not end at 50. Um, it was Shadowbringers that introduced the role quests. And Shadowbringers was like 70 to 80. So once you hit 70, it's only role quests from there on. Except for like jobs that were added later. Mm -hmm. They get like 10 levels of job quests. Um, at level 50, you get Chaos Thrust and Dragonfire Dive. Which is going to be significantly more fun, I think. Mm -hmm. Um and then, uh, cause you, oh yeah, no, there's a, oh, that's a lot of weapon seals that come later. Yeah. Uh, later is the, is the word of the day. Uh, yeah. So I am literally just trying to get to level 50 so I can do that job quest. That is the end of the stuff that I, as far as I'm aware is where Asinian is relevant. Uh, hopefully. I can just continue with Heaven's Wood and everything makes sense in the plot at that point. I just keep going. With yeah, I Ninja, did it without... <laughs> with um, Ninja, because Ninja is fun. I did that uh, without leveling Dragoon, because I had no idea that that was going to become a thing that was relevant mm -hmm. at the time. Um, the end result was I I didn't feel like I missed out on 
much really other than like low drops. you might say like a oh. line or two that references the past thing yeah like um i did notice that I've, i've forgotten what a fucking name is uh but the woman from doma is like hey i see you do the ninja go ninja go ninja go yeah. and <laughs> cool okay that is the thing that the game acknowledges like that a, you yeah. have that class yeah. mm-hmm um, having certain classes unlocked, like there's a um, there's a boss fight in Dawn Trail. It's like a duty where the boss mentions, "Oh, so you were trained in the way of the Viper, huh?" Basically, right? I mean, that makes sense. Like it's just the new class and little little throwaway things. Hmm. It's and you know things will be referenced as they become relevant. Uh, there is one part in uh, Endwalker that gets a lot of value for you or not a lot depending on how many jobs you've done the job quest for hmm. so i didn't do a lot so i didn't get much out of that but other people got a whole lot more out of it than i did and i feel kind of bad about that hmm. that is the thing for me to keep in mind how does the catch-up stuff work real quick yeah um you're talking about the catch-up experience yes for if like i know the story experience and stuff but like um for if you are leveling an off class, like you have okay. a, a level 17, um, whatever, then does that make it level faster for everything else? If you know, then if you were 60 for your main class, for example, um, let me just so there's um, it's called um, an armory uh, bonus. So this is for uh, when you have a uh, combat class is lower than your highest class be an extra 100% experience for leveling lower level jobs um oh, which okay. is like nice. 50 it's it's reduced down to 50% for like the last 10 levels um just so people don't level too too quickly because they don't want people to still run activities mm-hmm. but um when you have the uh, armory bonus on um plus the heat of battle buff which you get from like an fc or something um so when does that you can get bonus uh, like 120% experience bonus? Um, I'd have to see the breakdown of it because I'm pretty sure. Let me just look it up for you real quick. Because um, this is a, I don't, I don't know the full breakdown, um, but I think yeah. Okay, the armory bonus depends on the level difference between the um, your main class and the class you're level. Uh, so it does scale based on your level but I don't think anybody has mathed it out yet as far as I can see but some of the people who have played FF14 longer than I have probably have a better grasp on that but yeah I would uh, I would say that the higher your main is the bigger the bonus for your um, lower ones okay so uh, yeah okay this was supposed to be quick and i was just gonna follow on but that's <laughs> we, we can call it there i apologize for that. that's fine that's the curse of mmo talk that's like, okay it's okay you can easily branch off on other things uh what else have i been doing i have been writing i am an idiot and i am still doing things that i shouldn't be doing in lieu of the things that i should be doing that's just how that goes i have continued mm. my one piece quest against my better judgment is it uh, fun yeah it's still fun it's still well, there you go yeah i got like six commissions sitting in a little <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah all right mm. that's that's fair that puts things into perspective yeah yeah a little bit of perspective um yeah uh oh uh point of war i i found a thing okay apparently it used to scale based on the level discrepancy and that's not the case anymore okay all right sorry that's, I, I had to answer that question before I could let my brain move on. Oh, you, you didn't really answer the question. You said it used to do that, but now it doesn't. So what, is there no system anymore? No, it's a flat system of just 100% bonus. Oh, okay, cool. Oh, that's easy to work with. All right. Uh, other stuff I've done. Did I mention I was playing 10? FF10? I don't oh, yeah. think so. I think you mentioned it once. Yeah. Uh, so... Waka makes me uncomfortable. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. Like I I I knew that it was a meme, but wow, Waka, you're a dick. <laughs> uh, 
it's interesting because it's like it, everyone has that person that they know that is super racist but they're your friend and you don't really know like what do you do about this do you is is this the thing that is a deal breaker in this oh no you suck <laughs> I, I didn't know that about you I kind of have to I can't deal with that oh <laughs> why do you have to mm -hmm. suck so much and unlike the real world where you can change that or at least try mm. it's not much you can do with a fictional character yeah he's just mm. <sighs> that blitz ball though right yeah. Blitzball. Yeah, Blitzball. Blitzball. Yeah. A sport for only the right kind of people. Oh, God. <laughs> Blitzball is so fucking weird, man. It is. Like, it's... <sighs> okay, I like the idea of a thousand years have passed, society got completely fucked, and all the symbolism that we had is now just completely translated to some weird bullshit religion. That kind of makes sense, sort of, but yeah. Yeah, that kind of makes sense. Like, just mm -hmm. things get twisted and confused in, like, historical, like, inconsistency. That's fine. That makes sense. <laughs> A city got destroyed, and they made very clear that, hey, we saved the Blitzball team, though. It's really important, guys. It, everything's like, fine. Now. It's very, very important. It is culturally important. Don't you understand? <laughs> I feel like I should clarify that because that happens twice. Like, first time, uh, you just go to some other town and, like, Sin is there and he's blowing shit up. And Sin's being Sin. He's a big fucking whale dude. He kills everybody. Um, but, you know, the Blitzball team survives. So they're gonna... Give the tournament a good what for in memory of all the dead children. <laughs> yep. Listen, we may have had a disaster, but um, fortunately, uh, football players managed to survive. It's all good. It's okay. There's still going to be a game on Thursday. <laughs> so I will say, at least in a show like Ruby, when bad stuff happens and they try and like do that, at least it's because there's a lore reason for it. The monsters spawn from negativity, so you gotta force positivity to, like, balance it out. But, yeah, that's like, not really a thing in the actual show, though. But No, like, not really. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's, that's a thing that fans do, because that makes sense. Um, and they thought about it. Um, but, like, I, I said this happens twice. The first time is the natural disaster in the form of a giant fucking water whale. The second time... It's it's an actual intentional attempt at genocide of an entire people. Like, they just come in with, like, monsters and shit and try and wipe them out. And they pretty much do. But we saved the Blitzball team! <laughs> <laughs> like... <sighs> just replace the words Blitzball team with any sports team and you, it becomes instantly just, like, way worse. Does it? It's alright, everyone. Like... <laughs> no, it, it becomes America. It, like, you, you just... Yeah. It becomes too real. Yes. <laughs> it's depressingly realistic. Of course, you could also say Brazil and soccer. True. That's true. I'm sure every nation has their own pet hobby. So, yeah, that was, that was a weird thing. That might be the reason why I just sort of stopped playing that game for a while. It got like, hmm. Like, I, I, I get this is a side game mechanic and you need that team to be alive for the side game mechanic. That sucks, by the way. Blitzball is terrible to play. Um, Not a fun game. But, uh, yeah. Just in, in terms of the narrative cohesion of your world, that is, that's pretty fucking raw. I'm not going to lie. Just a little horrifying. It's fine. Yeah. Just a little trauma. Okay, I've solved the problem of Sin. He wants to go around killing everyone, but what if every single person in the world was a member of a Blitzball team? Aw, oh, shit. 
You found the loophole. That's the way it works. You can't kill anyone. Or there wouldn't be enough players for you to recruit for your own team. That's true. That's true. You gotta... That's that's 5G chess right there. Right. Shit, he's got the poison pass. We can't let him just die as part of the plot. <laughs> Fuck. He's part of my fantasy Blitzball team. Yeah, so... Blitzball. Yeah, so that's... That's that's Final Fantasy X. It's stupid. Yeah. Uh, there are good parts. Um, it's, it 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 paradoxically gets more hate than it deserves, and it does not get enough hate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That is an ac- accurate assessment. Yeah. So that's that's that game. I'll probably get around to finishing it. I was actually pretty close in terms of pure plot progression. Uh, so yeah. Um, is it that it doesn't get enough hate where hate is deserved? Yeah, pretty much. Like, people do, like, people point at the ha 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 thing. There's a scene of super forced laughter. Yeah, it's intentionally forced. The entire point of the scene is that it's forced laughter. That's, and yeah. That is the point. It's supposed to be weird and awkward. Literally everyone else in the party is standing behind them going, what the fuck are they doing? Like, <laughs> yeah, it is a dumb scene. It is an intentionally dumb scene. It is supposed to be endearing, and it's not especially endearing, and I'll give it credit for that as as the thing to complain about, but just on the face of the voice acting, no, that's reasonable. That's what it's supposed to be. So, like, the voice acting is solid. Like, that's fucking uh, Ratchet as Titus. It's um, Bender the Robot as Waka. Like, okay, <laughs> We oh. pulled, but all right. I mean, it was two thousand one. He was just getting work, I guess. Or the dog from Adventure Time, if you aren't familiar with Futurama, I guess. Was it Jake? Jake the dog? Yeah, yeah. Jake the dog. Yeah. I I didn't watch yeah. Adventure Time. <laughs> so, I mean, yeah. fair. Yeah. Anyway, uh, so that's that that that's that game. Um, patient, how's it going? How you doing? You good? Yeah, it's going well enough with me. As I recall, when last we left off, we were in we were in the middle of month thirteen of the patient one attempting to find a job. <sighs> well, I have not found a new job since then. Mm, that sucks. I have instead gone back to an old job. Okay. Willingly or because money? Yes. Ah. Yeah, that is that is generally how that works. Yes. Um. Which one? Which... The bank or the sales one? I remember the. Hmm. It wasn't the supposed to be sales, but it ended up being sales. Yeah. I'm not going to a purely commission based job when I'm trying to get out of the uncertainty of being able to afford my next month's rent. Purely yeah, commission based yeah. is not a, good, uh, not a good idea for that. Hmm. So, it's not great. So yeah, I contacted who is now the area sales manager of the market. She was promoted while I was there. I was on very good terms with her. So when I asked her for help, she made sure that I got hired back. So I'm now going through the training, going back to working at eight to five every day. It's taking some getting used to. And of course the training is tedious as all get out. Hmm. Do you have an hour lunch break? Yes, I do. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's that's the one thing that this company has over the one that I left it for. Sometime after the merger went on, they cut lunch breaks down from thirty from one hour to thirty minutes, and it was all the consolation that they could give to make us technically take forty five minutes instead. So, mm. but yeah, this. <sighs> This job, you get an hour-long lunch break, so that's that's good. And uh, since I left, the point one of the main gripes I had, if not the main gripe, has changed somewhat. I don't know how much I groused about the quotas that I had to reach. Some... The quota, the quota system is still as broken as it was before, in that. They look at whatever you did last year, they raise it by 10%, and that's what you have to get this year. Yay, capitalism. 
So yeah, there was... But on the bright side, the company has crumbled so much over the past couple of years with the high turnover rates that the monthly goals are pretty low. That's good. Okay. And starting at the company as a new hire means that I have three months before I actually have to deal with any of those quotas myself as an actual obligation on my job. Mm. Never mind the fact that most of the branches consistently do not perform. So not ideal, but no. it's 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 a job and it pays and that's the important part at the moment. Yes. And you know how to do it. Yes. And I mean it pays it's actually paying more an hour as a new hire than I was making in my previous job when I left. So that's nice. Oh, okay. That always that always is nice that it's a step up. You're not overstepping down pay wise. Yes. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah. So yeah. A lot less free time now. And I'm going to have to be extra diligent about going to the gym more. I'm cur my current process is I try to go three times a week, spend half an hour on the treadmill one of those days, 15 minutes on the other two. This week, I only managed two visits. One of them was the half hour one, and then yesterday I made it for 15. So I'm just going to try. It's, it's difficult after a long day of work to muster the urge, muster the volition to go and just strain yourself even more. Oh, yeah, I feel that. I mean, I used to work literally down the street from a, a gym that I was a member of. And uh, it's just that that effort to walk down there and get on something to work harder for even just like 20 minutes was a lot. Yeah. Even still, I'm enjoying having a paycheck again. And now that I'm a bit wiser in the ways of money, I'm going to focus on building up my savings and... Uh, wiping out my debts while I now have a source of income. Mm -hmm. So that next time I'm blindsided and left without a source of income, it won't be half as manic. <sighs> yeah, my I my car payment has been a problem without a, a source of income. And that's the only debt that I have, but still. Yeah. So aside from that, uh, I'm not sure there's been a whole lot else going on. There's uh, you know, not not really a whole lot else. Just things keep going, and we'll see how we'll see how things go from here. Hopefully, better. Yeah. Hope it all goes well. Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm forgetting something, but well, but that's, I mean, that's usually the case. We usually have an, a wrap up at the end of the episode of Oh, I forgot to mention this. Yeah. <laughs> well, tomorrow will be interesting. The there's going to be a big deal, a big broadcast from the church after I get off because the president of the church, the equivalent of the Pope, tomorrow is his 100th birthday. Oh, damn. All right. Yeah. No other president of the church has lived to even 98, let alone 100. So that's going to be, it's going to be interesting. I hope it's a fun celebration or oh. interesting at least. Yeah. Enjoyable will be a good word for it, I think. But, uh, I mean, starts right after I get off of work, so it'll have to, I'll be, uh, it'll be an interesting evening. Not sure exactly what I'm trying to say there, just... Hmm. Maybe it would be a time. Uh, yeah. Oh, also, there's a friend of mine who... Uh, darn it. Uh, there's a friend of mine who is... Uh, I've been helping him edit a book that he wrote uh, for... The past few months, his wife just finished doing the last uh, read-through of it, and they've submitted it for querying, and uh, we're told to expect results in, uh, what was it again, 16 to 20 weeks. Yep, that sounds about right. Yep. She also submitted a, uh, a children's book for publishing about 16 weeks ago, so... We're hoping to hear back on that soon. Well, you just have to make a book every week, and then you start every week with good news. Oh, hush. <laughs> That's cool, though. I hope uh, I hope that time passes quickly and they get approved. Likewise. Yeah. And it's, it's more on the minimum side as opposed to the maximum side. 
Yeah. This, I mean, this is a project that's been in the making for a very long time. So I'm hoping that it pans out well and it pans out soon and so forth. Mm -hmm. But yeah, there's not much else going on with me. I mean, on the weight loss side, I'm hovering at around five and ten pounds lighter than I was when I started. So that's nice. Yeah, that's pretty good. Just need to keep up the progress so I can widen that gap. And I'm, I'm pretty sure that's about it. Just a bit more writing on the side, enjoying some stories, and waiting to see what's going to happen next. Slicer, what's up? Uh, mine will be pretty short. Uh, I've been, I recently gained access to Hulu. Someone shared their password with me. Uh, that's because that, you can still do that with Hulu. Uh, so I've been watching Futurama. It's been very fun. And I haven't seen the latest, uh, I thought it was just one season, but I guess Hulu has actually made two seasons. Oh. Uh, so that's pretty cool. So I'm watching, uh, season 11. I'm almost at 12 now. Uh, let's see. Watching, uh, I started watching Bridgerton with my girlfriend. Uh, so that's been actually really fun. It's a surprisingly good show. Fully recommend it. Um, I don't know how... Mm, I'm trying to keep things light. Uh, I found out someone in a bad situation was in a much, much worse situation than they were comfortable telling me about until they were in a safer location. Uh, so I've just been kind of dealing with that mm -hmm. uh, and helping them into a better place, which has thankfully worked out now, but it was a tense couple weeks. So... That's been a huge relief on me. Uh, let's see. Been uh, binge playing Sunken Land, which is essentially Waterworld Minecraft. Uh, I don't know how much it is on Steam, but if it's any more than like... If it's like $20 or less, I fully recommend grabbing it. But there isn't... It's still one of those early access games that doesn't quite have a lot of content in it oh. to really sink your teeth into any, for any more than like a couple days. Uh, and that's that's pretty much been about it. I've just been playing a lot of mobile games in the small amount of time I have. Uh, between things, because uh, they're low effort and don't take a lot of energy. And yeah, that's that's about it for me. Yay. Does anyone uh, have anything they forgot, <laughs> as we usually do? Yes. Why are you making me aware of it? Zero. <laughs> yes, the Patreon. You forgot them. I'm just, you know. Yeah. It's, it's sure. I forgot. Oh, no. I don't know, you... man. I'm s s somehow... I was ready to start recording, then I instantly checked out as soon as I plugged my microphone in. <laughs> Thank you our, to our patrons, uh, James MacArthur, Rehits21, Vale, Greek Guy, Ethan F., and The Crossbrain. Thank you very much for your support. Thank you, everyone. So, uh... Oh, I had... Oh, I did forget something. Oh, my gosh. last weekend uh, was pretty terrible. Ouch! That sucks. Yeah. I had COVID. Yeah. I oh right. Figured right. you didn't want to talk about it based on how you didn't talk about it, but okay. Um, I, come, believe it or not, I wiped it from my mind. <laughs> Be fair. Yeah. I had COVID on the weekend, on the weekend in which uh, my parents went out to go to a wedding that I was not invited to. Um, so I was uh, home alone with uh, COVID over the weekend uh, last weekend. So that was uh that was why I uh binged the good place. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That yeah, makes it. sense. I have nothing else to do. I cannot leave. I had to put it I had to create sub notes for the first time for a substitute oh. teacher to step in for me. Okay, that's what you might sub. Okay. I was a little confused at first. Yeah. Like, no, not for, that what for did ordering you think a sandwich. He meant? For ordering a sandwich. Like oh, he couldn't okay. he couldn't speak. And so he had to write a note or something. No, I had to get a substitute teacher to step in for me. And uh, fortunately, my school, they have on-site uh, substitute teachers for um, emergency situations like that. Mm. So that was nice. Yeah, that's, that's pretty that's, great, actually. Uh, I'm surprised the school district would do that. It's a charter school, which means uh, they get that as a little little benefit help thing. You so mean they just, have I don't money. have to search for a substitute. I wouldn't say that. They just are prepared. Hmm. With money. I feel like we need to cycle back to Slice's money. like fucking sub notes thing. You thought they had a term for that? <laughs> I don't know. Listen, you make your you order your subway sub, you gotta make your sub notes. 
Yes, exactly. <laughs> it makes sense. I'm not crazy. Yeah, totally. But anyway, yeah, substitute teacher for the first time. Uh, and um, I don't know, it was uh, probably uh, one of the most boring slash worst uses I've ever had of a three-day weekend. Yeah. Because oh, I had yeah, it was Memorial Day, Day too. off as well. Oof. Uh, Labor Day. Yeah, that's the day, yeah. So, yay! But, um, yeah, no. It's uh, all better now. Uh, I was ne negative on my COVID test um, on, like, the Tuesday. Uh, so I was able to go back into work. Hmm. Which is nice. It was a very short COVID. But it also explains why, like, when I did uh, back to school night with all the parents, I was sweating bullets and sure was tired. Mm. It's probably when things started. The parents are sure going to love uh, you. Hey, you know, I know how I got that. Guess who? Schools are breeding grounds for diseases. I mean, yeah, children are always in germ factories, so, you know. It will it will work its way through everybody eventually. That's that's how it goes. I had I had kids who were out sick a couple of days, and I don't know if they had COVID. I know that one of the kids from a different class had COVID, so it probably was just going around the entire school. Mm. That's this kind of happens. Mm -hmm. So yeah, <laughs> the only way to not get sick is to be a neglectful parent. <laughs> don't hug your child. <laughs> don't Give them to the nanny. <laughs> okay, I feel like on don't hug your child, that's a good note for us to end on. So, yeah. Don't uh, be a neglectful parent. <laughs> Thank you so for listening. So, Discord, Patreon, links, description, everybody. See you guys. Bye-bye.